This is a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell with Gail King in New York. We have breaking news from New Jersey where a train packed with commuters crashed into a station a short time ago. This happened in Hoboken, just across the Hudson River from New York City's financial district. Witnesses say the train ran into the station at high speed. Right at the height of rush hour, too, there are preliminary reports of many injuries. Police and fire crews are at the scene right now. CBS Evening News executive producer Steve Kappas is at the Hoboken station and joins us now live on the phone. Steve, what can you tell us? What happened? Well, Gail, the, the reports are that a train, a, a New Jersey transit commuter train, uh, somehow came barreling through uh, the end point of this rail line and blew through the station, uh, knocking down a beam in the process. Uh, what we're seeing right now is a, an ongoing rescue effort to bring people out of the train, the, the wreckage. Um, I am about, uh, I'm directly across from the site where the, the, uh, there is a triage uh, set up here where people who've been injured are being treated and evaluated. And I can tell you there are scores of people here, many of them with bloodied uh, shirts, clothing, uh, head injuries. I saw one person with uh, what appeared to be a broken leg. They're also bringing more severely injured people out on stretchers, many of them covered in thermal blankets. Uh, it's hard to tell if these are people who've lost consciousness, but it is an ongoing situation now as rescue crews are, are in and out of that train station uh, trying to pull people out. I, I can't underscore how crowded this would have been uh, at a, you know in the eight o'clock hour in the commute into New York. This is the uh, terminal point for a very crowded rail line, New Jersey Transit, as people come in from all around the region and then transfer uh, to the path station to get over into New York City. So there would have been thousands of people in this station, and, and you have to think about not just the people who would have been on the train, but also people who would have been on the platform. Uh, as, as the train went uh, through the terminal point. I know you live in the area, Stephen. They were saying that this was the end point for this train, true? That's correct. There are a number of New Jersey transit rail lines that, that terminate at this station. This is a, a historic station. It's an old building, and you do have to question the, uh, whether the, the structural damage might perhaps be worse because of the age of the complex. You might recall, Gail, that this was a, 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 a train station that was heavily damaged during Hurricane Sandy. Uh, the the uh, subway lines were flooded, uh, and it took a long time to restore that. So who knows if there was structural damage to the facility. Um, but regardless of that, if you have a train come barreling through the, term, the, the terminus, uh, you're, you're going to have uh, a devastating situation, and that's what's playing out. It's an incredibly disturbing scene here uh, at the train station and in a, a parking lot where commuters would normally be gathering. Um, and we're just seeing rescuers moving swiftly in and out of the train station, taking out injured people. I'm seeing a woman now uh, wrapped in a, a, a blanket walking gingerly to uh, a, an ambulance. Others, uh, you know, we're, we're also seeing uh, it's not just emergency workers who are doing these rescues. We're seeing people who were also on the train appear to have just been helped or maybe have, were in the area uh, helping uh, their fellow passengers out. Um, but, you know, we're also seeing people who are severely injured who are right now lying on the on this parking lot being assessed and uh they're trying to get people out of this area into the hospital as quickly as possible. Steve, how are they triaging many of these victims? Well, Nora, what I'm seeing right now are probably about 60 or 70 people, all of whom, many of whom are standing, which is obviously the good news. They, they appear to be moving on, you know, they're, they are moving on their own power, and uh, they each have uh, tags around their necks. They have been assessed by emergency medical personnel uh, in this triage process. And the more severely injured are being whisked out of here on ambulances and stretchers. Uh, but then there are dozens, dozens of people, you know, 75 to 100 people who are all lined up waiting to be, uh, I, I assume, taken to the hospital. Uh, many of them have bandages uh, to their head. Many of them have 
their clothing is bloody, um, and some of them uh, some of them are standing up uh, next to an ambulance, and some of them are on the ground. I'm, I'm seeing fire crews and Hoboken police, others uh, treating one man who's on the ground now. Uh, Steve, how did you happen to hear about it? Race. How did you ha did you happen to be there, or did you hear about it and then rush over? Uh, the latter. I was in uh, my home, heard what, uh, heard a lot of sirens, did not know what was going on, and uh, came over here. Um, and uh, I was in the triage area for a while. Um, uh, and I also, as I got closer to the station, Gail, the thing that was so disturbing as somebody who lives here is you're, walk you're watching people leave the area of the accident uh, with tears in their eyes, you know, calling loved ones. Uh, and, you know, kind of looking to be in a state of shock. Steve, we know that this, uh, this transit has 15,000 boardings per weekday. You, per weekday. You pointed out just how busy it would be at rush hour in the 8 o'clock hour. We're hearing from police sources that multiple I-beams collapsed inside, that rescue crews are in the process of removing victims. Is it your sense that there are still many people trapped inside the station, those that have not been out and are being assessed uh, by first responders? Yeah, I can tell you that they're still going in and still bringing people out. Uh, so this is an ongoing situation here. Yeah, the pictures are very jarring, Steve. We're seeing the video, and I can't imagine what it's like for you seeing it in person. It's, it's very, very unsettling to see what's happening. And I think Nora raises a good point. There have to be people still trapped inside what we're looking at right now. And, and uh, if, if the in structural integrity of that train station is in question, then, um, you know, as I say, this is an, this is an older facility, and uh, this could be a, a, a much more desperate situation, depending on, you know, if it's true that support beams are down. Uh, but uh, you, you can only imagine the force of a train if it's true that it was going full speed. Um, obviously, that, that would do a tremendous amount of damage. And uh, it's, it's just kind of incomprehensible that something like this could happen. You're going to have to figure out what was going on on that train. You know, was, was who knows? Was this uh, a deliberate attempt? Was this, was, did something happen to the train operator? There's just no way of knowing at this point. All right, Steve Kappas, who is reporting on the scene there in Hoboken. Steve, thank you so much. We want to bring in our transportation correspondent, Chris Van Cleve. Chris, uh, what have you found out? What will investigators be looking at? Well, good morning. Federal Railroad Administration investigators are on their way to the scene. The NTSB is monitoring this. When you're talking about dozens and dozens of injuries and certainly the potential that they could be serious injuries, even fatal injuries, you will likely see the NTSB send somebody to this crash. What they're going to look at, uh, what happened here? Why was the train going so fast? Why did it overrun the terminus here? Uh, one thing to note, New Jersey Transit and PATH trains won't have positive train control up and running until 2018. Uh, according to the FRA. So um, this is a situation that likely uh, positive train control would have prevented because that's a system that keeps a train from going too fast, can stop a speeding train and prevent a collision. Um, one of the questions that's going to come up, I think, the NTSB recommended further studies to whether seatbelts would make a difference on trains after Amtrak. Here's a situation where uh, people were likely going to be thrown around this train because they're not in seats, and that was the cause of a lot of the injuries in the Amtrak crash. Don't be surprised to start hearing talk about whether or not seatbelts would have made a difference here. Uh, but if you're an investigator, you want to find out why this train was going so fast, what was going on with the, the operator of the train, um, how much rest had that person had, uh, what was the signal situation at the time, uh, why they didn't know they were coming into a station, why that train was going so fast. That will be the big question. Why was the train going fast enough to jump through the, the stopper at the end of that track and continue going the way it did? I had the same thought, Chris, about seat belts. You know, at a, at a high velocity crash, as is suspected uh, at this hour, whether that would have made uh, a, a difference there. How are first responders making it to the scene? Well, you know, they're, they're battling the New York area traffic the same way all the commuters are, unfortunately. Now, it, you know, it, that, it looks like that you had a fairly quick response here and that you have a lot of emergency responders in the area. You know, the New York tri-state area is, 
um, pretty remarkable on how quickly they can respond to a major accident. We've seen it time and time again in New York and New Jersey. So getting responders there is just a matter of getting them through traffic and on scene. You've stopped all of the train traffic uh, going into that station. They're stopping most of the ferry traffic going in, in and around that, that station. Um, one thing they have to wait for is to make sure that the station and the tracks are de-energized. Uh, and that can slow responders down. But the last report we saw is that that has completely happened, that the, all of the power around those tracks has been shut down, which gives them free access. One other thing you've got to wonder is what is the structural integrity of that area of the station? So those first responders are going to go in one way or another. Um, but you do have to give some thought to, uh, you know, how sturdy is the area where that train came to rest uh, as you're trying to get people off. You know, yeah. Nora, the other thing about the trains is people put things above their heads there. Uh, that could be another scene that, uh, that can lead to injuries. I was thinking about that, too. There is no such thing as a good time for something like this. But, Nora, this has to be the worst possible time in the commuting, right in the commuting rush hour. Our coverage will continue throughout the day on our 24-hour streaming network. That's CBSN. And for those of you in the West, we'll have the latest on this story in just a few minutes on CBS This Morning. And there will be a full wrap-up tonight on the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell with Gail King, CBS News, New York. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com.